G'day folks, welcome back to Kieran's Training. So today we're going to have a quick look at a pre-start on a Frenner. So the kind of things we're going to be looking for before we jump in and start the crane. Alright, so what we'll do, we'll start at the front and we'll just work our way around. Now the trick to this is, what do we look for? We're just looking for everything on the crane. Alright, so if we start at the front here, okay, so down the front, okay, we've got our hook, alright, we can check for any wear in the hook. Check for any stretch in the bite of the hook. Make sure the latches are working. Make sure that swivel runs nice and free. All right, working our way up. All right, we can look at the hook block. We can look at the sheaves in the hook block. Make sure there's no damage on these sheaves here. We can look at the rope. Make sure we've got plenty of oil on that rope as well. Okay, any of these safety pins. So any of these retaining clips, we can make sure that they're all in place as well. Okay, all right. Now, as we go up, all right, we can see our rhino hook at the top here. Okay, we can see our rhino hook at the top here. All right, make sure that's nice and firm in there. Check all our pins as we come along. All right, make sure all these pins are in place. Okay, got all our pins there. All right, on both sides, we've got the retaining clips in the pins as well. Okay check our rope termination here make sure these pins are in here make sure that's nice and firm there's no damage to the ferrule here okay so once we've done around the hook lock area all right we can start working our way around the crate so as we go down we're going to go down along the length of the boom all right so we're going to be checking out the boom as we go down and as we're going down the boom okay we're essentially looking for any signs of so basically going to be looking for any signs of flaking paint any cracks any bends any twists anything along those sorts of lines okay as we're going down we can also make sure we check these lugs i right, check for any excessive wear in there check for any cracks in the welds along here right. and you've got your inner lug all right same deal making sure there's no damage along those lugs there as well okay Coming down the length of the boom, okay, we get to the front of the crane, okay, when we're at the front of the crane, down the front, you will typically get your air tank, make sure we don't have any water in there, okay, we can check all our lenses as we go, so make sure there's no cracked lenses, everything's all good in there, okay, down on this side, all the lenses are good, okay, always a good idea to make sure on your spreader bar, if it's fitted on the front, all these retaining clips are in as well. Okay, these have been known as you're driving down the road for these pins to come out as well. So it's always a good idea just to double check them, especially if you've been using it that you haven't forgot to put those pins in. Okay, we'll keep working our way around. So as we're working our way around, okay, make sure we check our tyres. All right, we can give it a good kick on the inner and outer tyre make sure they're nice and solid okay a lot of friends will also have indicators on the wheel nuts to make sure there's been no turning of the uh, wheel nuts while you've been driving along okay keep coming down all right check all our clearance lights as we come down okay got the fire extinguisher so we'll make sure that's fully charged okay got these electrical terminations down here on the boom Make sure they're all in good condition. Look up the lumping cylinder, so check it off all the way up. Okay, so all the way up to the top there. Making sure there's no leaks or anything else on those cylinders. Okay, you'll also notice on the boom there, if I can get it in there, you've got your boom angle indicator. So make sure your boom angle indicator is in good condition as well. Okay. Keep coming along, you've got your pivot points on your booms. Right? So you've got your pivot point there. Okay. Make sure all your handles are solid. Make sure your mirrors are in good condition. And your steps and access to the grain are in good condition as well. Okay, coming down towards the back. Okay, make sure you've got plenty of grease on your pivot points there. Okay. Let's have a look, see how we go. Okay. Make sure you have a good look at your winch, all right? And have a look at the lay of the rope on the winch. 
make sure there's no gaps or anything in the rope. If you've got a green sticker on it, make sure your green sticker is current and in date. Any hydraulic lines up there, make sure all your hydraulic lines are in good condition and no leaks all the way down. Okay, now we come to our center. Center here, well, spin this around. All right, so we can have a look in here at our articulation, our steering joints and our articulation points. Make sure they're all in good condition. They've got plenty of grease. We've got our decals. Make sure all your decals are legible and in good condition as well. All our hydraulic hoses in here, looking for any leaks, etc., in your hydraulic hoses as well. All right, keep walking around. Make sure the steps here are in good condition. Coming up, all right. We've got a fly on the side here, so make sure that's secured if it's up there. All right. Make sure everything's nice and tight, nothing's going to come loose. We've got the sheave on the front, so make sure that's all spinning nice and freely. Keep working our way around. So we're just naming everything as we go around because we're essentially checking everything. Making sure we're checking our rear wheels, both inside and outside. Checking all your wheel nuts again. Yeah. Keep working around. All right. Got them. As you come around, make sure you check all your lenses. Make sure all your lenses are in good condition. You've got your real lights. All right. Check the radiator. Look for any signs of damage along your radiator. At the top, make sure you've got a nice, clear um, rear view camera. Rear work lights are in good condition. Keep coming around. All right. We have our air filter here. So you can give it a little squeeze at the bottom here. Make sure there's no dust in there. Right. Spin that around. All right. Now we come to our rear air tanks. So we've got our rear air tanks here. Okay, keep in mind on some printers, these can be at the back of the crate as well. So they may be underneath at the back as well. All right, make sure we give these tires and wheel nuts a good checking over, both the outside and the inside tire. Okay, keep coming around. Got our diesel tank there. Come to our batteries. Okay, so we'll have a look at our batteries here. All right, make sure they are nice and firmly secured in there. Okay, check all our ter terminals, make sure they're all in good condition as well. While we're here, we can turn this isolator on so we're ready to go when we get started. Okay. Close that up. All right, so we've got more decals. We've got our grease points here. So it's a good idea once a week to pump them full of grease. If it's an older Frenner where it might be getting a little bit sloppy in the steering, good idea to keep them full of grease a bit more often. Take some, some of that uh, wobbliness out while you're driving along. Okay, articulation points and your steering points. Making sure we're having a look at them and seeing they're well greased. Yeah. Coming up. All right, going to check our winch again from this side, make sure we don't have any leaks on any of the hoses. I'll pull other hoses down, check the articulation points here. Now, where are we? Yep, make sure we check those articulation points. Okay, check the grab handles, make sure they're nice and solid. Having a look at our mirrors here, looking at our steps. Okay, come down to the next cylinder. Making sure you've got no oil leaks at all along your cylinder. Checking, at, looking at the pivot points, both top and bottom. Okay. Working our way around. Okay, we've got our wheels and tyres back down here. All right, both outside and inside. Okay, back to this side of the frame. We're going to check these retaining pins are in square bar on this side, and then we're going to look down the length of the boom on this side as well, looking for any defects at all. Okay, so that's a quick look around 
at the outside. Don't forget, we've got to check our oil and water as well. So we'll climb up top and we'll have a look at the oil and water in the printer as well. Okay, so up we go. I'm not going to pull that out because it has been running for a little while, so but it had been checked this morning. Okay, got our radiator up here, make sure we check that. And while we're here, we're going to have our once over the engine looking for any signs of any oil leaks in any of the hoses or anything that looks out of the ordinary on that as well. Okay, so we'll close this one and we'll open the next one. Okay, now if we have a look down in here, what you'll find, hopefully you can see that, down in here we've got our transmission oil as well. Okay, so don't forget about your transmission oil being in the other undercover, other cover, it does get forgotten about quite often. Okay, we'll close this one up. And once again, while we've got this one open, we're going to check for any oil leaks, etc. as well. Okay, climbing down. Now, while I'm here, I just want to open this one up. Okay. So, with this one here, so this is where you can start looking at if you need to grease your drive line, etc. Now, a nice easy tip for greasing your drive line. You open up this cover, and as you can see, it's right behind the back window there. So, you open this cover, and if we can see it down here, oh, you'll see a grease nipple down here. Now, the best way to line up your grease nipples on the drive line is you open this cover up, and then you're going to Look out your back window and slowly drive forward until this grease nipple goes from here to the top. Once our grease nipple is sitting at the top there, that means all the grease nipples underneath are going to be facing straight down and it's going to be a lot easier to grease along that drive line. So that's just another handy little tip to keep in mind if you are greasing your crane. All right, so that's a quick go over on the outside of the Frenner. Okay, so if you have any questions, don't forget to drop us a line. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, thank you.